Thank you very much for coming this evening to Engineers Ireland office for the Global Engineers for Asia. Thank you as well to those that are watching it online. My name is Heji and I am the membership executive of Engineers Ireland. So this event is for Croatian engineers that are thinking of moving to Ireland or maybe for, for someone that just recently moved to Ireland and is looking for more information of how to progress in their career in the country. So what's coming up today? So I will start talking about Engineers Ireland and how you can become a member, what are the membership benefits, and also how you can progress in your career and apply for a professional title. Then we have Dennis Hardy, he's a, a Croatian engineer, and he will be talking about his uh, career um, in Ireland. And then Borna Zuber is going to give you tips of how you can find a job in Ireland, how you can um, make um, good networking in the country. And then we will open for questions. And for those that are attending in person here today, we will have the networking opportunity with Croatian food, finger food, from 7 to 8 p.m. So a little bit about Engineers Ireland. First, so Engineers Ireland is one of the oldest professional bodies in the country. We were established in 1835, and all types of, of engineers, all disciplines can become a member of Engineers Ireland. We have more than 25,000 members, and we are the sole body for awarding registered professional titles. So if you ever heard about Chartered Engineer, Fellow, Associate Engineer, or Engineering Technician, they are all a professional title that are protected by Engineers Ireland. So we are your professional home in country. So what are the membership benefits? Once you become a member of Engineers Ireland, you have a very good opportunity to network with other professional engineers, especially if you are coming from abroad. So this is um, in, in, we have more than 200 events per year, so you can meet with other engineers and engineering companies from different disciplines, sectors, and you also have access to exclusive reports, such as salary survey, so you can be up to date with everything that's happening in Ireland and in the industry, and you access uh, technical articles, and you also receive news and um, newsletters every month and every week by Engineers Ireland. If you are looking for a job as an engineer, and especially being uh, from outside Ireland and UK, being a global engineer, it's important that you are a member of Engineers Ireland because you got the recognition of your engineering qualification. And you can include this information in your CV, in your LinkedIn, and your email signature. And we can, you can also learn new skills. So as a member, you get discount in all our uh, continued professional development courses or CPD, which I will be talking a little bit more about. And if you are ready to apply for a professional title, you get all the support from us. And um, we have weekly, monthly um, clinics and webinars to help you, to guide you through this process for you to be successful in your application. And you also get an international recognition. So if you are traveling abroad, if you are traveling for work or moving to another country, you can transfer your professional title and you will be recognized as an engineer. So here I have a slide with a recording video going through the CPD. Um, CPD area in our website. So if you click in CPD and careers, you will see that what counts as a CPD, CPD in calendar, e-learning, CPD training courses by team, volunteering, essential skills and emergence trend series. So you can select the CPD training calendar because then you see all the courses that we have available in the next um, month. And you can also search by a specific discipline, sector, society, or even by date. Okay, so here's everything you find on our website. 
Um, so if you're not a member of Engineers Ireland yet, here I have a step-by-step -step of how you can apply for your membership. So first thing to do is to go to our website and fill out an application form with your details. And then we need a copy of your engineering qualification translated with a certified in translation into English and has to be verified. So how do I verify my qualification? There's different ways you can verify. So first of all, it's important to mention if your qualification has the QR code, you don't have to do this step. You can skip this because um, we don't need to verify. But if you don't have the QR code, you have to verify this qualification before you send by email. So you can ask a member of Engineers Ireland, someone, you know, colleague in work, someone that you know to sign a copy of your qualifications, including their membership number and the date. If you don't know anyone that is a member, you can go to any guard stations in Ireland, the, the police, and ask them to, to sign a copy of your qualification stating as a true copy of the original. This is a free service and you don't have to make an appointment. You just get the originals in English, make a copy and go to the guard station and ask them to sign and stamp. If you are not in Ireland yet, if you're still in Croatia, you can ask a lawyer to do this for you. So it would be the same thing, ask them to um, sign a copy and stamp. We also accept documents by um, through Digitary. Digitary is an online platform where you give us a temporary password and you can access your qualification online. And another way to do it is asking uh, uh, your college to sign a form. So we can send you this form and then you can forward it to your college. So after having a copy of your qualification in English and verified, we will need a copy of your ID. So this could be your passport or uh, your driving license, a document that it has your picture on it. And then the next thing is the payment. So the payment, um, students that are studying bachelor or master's or PhD in college, they are free, so you, we can you know, um, check which type of course you are doing at the moment. But if you are doing a full-time course, it is uh, free. Normal membership, uh, um, uh, no, normal membership fee is 280 euro per year. And if you are unemployed, you can apply for the special fee of 65 euro. And this is the uh, year, okay? So if you apply, for example, in November, your membership will be valid until the next year in November. After that, your documents will go to the membership qualification board and we will uh, analyze it and approve you as a member. So you receive an email confirming that you were elected as a new member of Engineers Ireland and you also receive a membership card by post. If you don't have a Bachelor of Engineering, if you have a BSc, a Bachelor of Science, for example, in Energy or Chemistry, you can also become a member of Engineers Ireland. But you need to include uh, your CV and a copy, and a, sorry, a letter from work, just stating that you are working in an engineering role. This is uh, to become a member. We also have um, the EU directive um, partnership. So, so so one of the agreements we have is the EU directive. So this is an um, agreement to facilitate the mobility of chartered engineers around Europe. So if you're already a chartered engineer in Croatia, you can transfer your title through this agreement. So you don't have to go through all the process of applying for, for a chartered engineer and professional title again. But there is a um, um, competence-based document that you have to write. Uh, so there are 500 words for each of those um, uh, saying there. So the engineering knowledge, um, how you apply the engineering knowledge about leadership, communication skills, and ethical practice. And then there's an application fee of 275 euro. And you don't need to be a member before applying for the EU directive. So if there's anyone here um, already a chartered engineer in Croatia, 
you can transfer uh, your title to Ireland going through this process. If you know someone that is a member of Engineers Ireland, you, you can apply for the Refer a Friend scheme and you get a 100 euro voucher. So this person then has to include your membership details into the application form and you will receive a 100 euro voucher per post. And once you become a member, you can choose uh, which region you want to be part of. And I highly recommend you to do that because then you will receive relevant content about that specific region. So we have 12 regions connecting um, engineers around Ireland and overseas. And you can also choose uh, your engineering division. So if you want to hear about if you're civil, but you want to hear about something about mechanical, you know, you, you can select that from your membership profile. And you can also uh, select uh, which society you want to be part of. So the young engineers are the engineers that are graduate. So here I have a video about uh, international recognition. So it's a short video and we'll give you a very good overview of why becoming a member and being part of the the professional body. Engineers Ireland membership delivers on international recognition of your qualifications. Passports are normally associated with a country. However, as a member of Engineers Ireland, you effectively have a professional engineering passport across the globe. Your accredited engineering education is internationally recognised through various accords and the European Network Accreditation of Engineering Education through mutual recognition agreements and the International Engineering Alliance Agreements. Our international standing has enabled our members to work on global projects, continuing the worldwide influence of Irish engineers. Another project I am currently working on is Peru Reconstruction Project. Following on from the devastation of the 2017 El Nino event in Peru, the government of Peru signed a government-to-government -government agreement with the Department of International Trade in the UK for the reconstruction and retrofit of critical infrastructure and buildings. Many of our engineers have shared case studies of their international work on our website. Indeed, some of our Chartered Engineer of Year recipients have travelled as engineers and provided solutions to international challenges. By retaining association with these relevant accords, we assist members seeking a global assignment through a local company or directly abroad. Also, through MRAs, your international achievements are recognised by Engineers Ireland. Our members shared that Having a professional title with Engineers Ireland seems to resonate with professionals in Ireland. Despite my having worked overseas for so many years, my experience is recognised in Ireland. And being chartered with Engineers Ireland is a great benchmark. Your Engineers Ireland membership delivers for you. Be an active member in our community. Engage today. Okay, so um, so we are the professional home for global engineers. So 31% of all new members in 2021 were from outside Ireland and the UK. So we created this uh, global engineer series. And they are a um, series that they are designed for and uh, tailored to a uh, target country, language, or maybe an engineering sector. So I have here a few examples of global engineers we had during the year. Um, so we have one for South Africa, uh, one for India in May, and then we have one for Brazil in June, and uh, we had also uh, an event for uh, critical skills. So critical skills would be for everyone that needs um, a working visa um, to work in Ireland. Um, and then after today, uh, we will still have another one in December. This is for um, all nationalities and will be in Cork in our office. Okay, so now I will talk about uh, the registered professional titles. So we, there are the, the four titles we have, and here are the difference between them. So an engineering technician is someone with an accredited level six and qualification, uh, and qualification and at least three years working experience. And then um, an associate engineer would be an accredited level seven and at least four years working experience. The chartered engineer is someone with an accredited level eight and an accredited level nine. 
and or maybe with other credits in line, but um, graduated before 2012, and uh, have been four years of experience. So these four years were the experience as much as you see in the regulations, but it's very rare to see someone with four years of work experience being successful in their part of the engineer application. So usually it's around eight years of work experience. This is the average. And then a fellow would be someone that is already a part of the and, and has uh, for, uh, for at least five years and, and held a position of responsibility. So this would be someone with like 25 years, 20 years. And when you go online, you can find all these uh, regulations and documents to help you to prepare for your um, application, your professional title. So I recommend you to read them because they will give you examples. They will tell you exactly what they're expecting to see from you as a professional engineer. Uh, and for those that are not from Ireland, they mentioned at the beginning, I'm from Brazil, so in Brazil, we don't have a chart of engineer. So why, you know, we would apply for a professional site? What that mean? So I have here this slide giving lots of different reasons why you would be, um, you would apply for, for a, a professional site. So that will be your competence as an engineer and recognized and will give you, um, um, you maximize your own potential. You gain credibility and you can sign for tenders. So if you're not a chartered engineer, you'll never be able to sign for big projects, for example. Um, and then we we did some research here and we saw that most of Croatian um the Greg, where is that the Greg, yeah, yeah. Double, and the city are accredited. But they, you know, we have to go to them and check exactly because accreditation is a thing that some, sometimes uh, from 2000 to 2010 was a credit. And then 2010 to 2015 was it. So we have to check if you're a accreditation either one. And then if it is a credit, it will make all the difference when you're looking into the process of applying for charging. So we assume that your, your qualification is a credit. So then you would be in, in the standard route, okay? The standard route is someone that has an accredited qualification and also has a master's degree that is accredited. And, or if you don't have a master's, you have to have graduated before 2012. And, and then in case that you do have a, a credit level eight, but you don't have a master's, this is then the everyone for the learning. So you have to invite three learning materials. They are just to prove that your location of permission that you didn't complete math or degree. And then plus everything else described here, uh, this is everything that's included in the process to become charter. And you go for an interview. Okay. So it's basically your your work food preservation. So for those that are in the beginning of their, their careers, you know, when the advice people track, people record of everything you do. Because you will, you can then include that in your report, and then you um, you write essays as well. So there are two essays that you you write you just like five hundred words each here, and one essay engineers are give you the topic. So you, we give you five options, and you can choose one and write your opinion about that, that topic. And the other essay is something that you choose. So if you work in the solar panels, for example, and, and you want to write about solar panels, then you, you know, it's a, your, your choice. And then you go for an interview. So the professional interview is one hour interview, and it's always with two chartered engineers. And they will ask you questions about, about the process, about what you included in the report. But then for those that uh, you see in yellow here, this is the experiential learning group. This is for all Brazilians, for example, you know, there's Brazil here. And unfortunately, Brazil doesn't have any, you know, accreditation um, with Washington board. So they are all on the and most of all the countries as well. So then this is for someone that doesn't have maybe a level eight, you know, someone from Croatia that is like has a level seven, or maybe even someone that is an associate engineer and have, have more than seven years in working with students. For this route, there's an initial assessment to do first. So you, it's basically, uh, your CV in more detail, where the membership qualification board will see if you are ready to apply for um for the title, and then you go for approval. If you pass, then you can start the phase one 
phase one is based on their education information. So this is because there are courses are bred, they have to demonstrate their education information. And this is all based in the uh, theory knowledge. So when you go for an interview, and if they pass, they can start working in the phase two. And then the professional development and be more about, more about their experience, how they put in practice, everything they you know learn in college. So there are two interviews for the yellow to become a part. So I, I'm going be sharing these slides uh, with you after the presentation, so you can go and work and you know have a look if you if you wish. Um, a few um, things here uh, before thinking of applying for a professional title is that you must be a member of Engineers Arm for at least three months, and you have to demonstrate your competences as a professional and engineer, and you need supporters. So for, as part of this process, you need two supporters. So you need two target engineers to um, help you during this process. And they will be reading your application and give you um, suggestions, including this, this, that, not engineers I engineers I will help you, we help you within the process, but actually reading your application will be your supporter. So I would advise you to get someone that is from the same area, someone that worked with you before, knows, knows you as a, as a professional. And then there is also mm -hmm. uh, 35 hours of CPD that you must include in your uh, application. So I have the next slide about CPD. I'm going to talk, talk more about this. So then there's two deadlines for a year, for the phase one and for phase two. It's always in the beginning of the year in January and the middle of the year in June. So the CPD year, uh, this is in, it's an interesting to mention because most people think that CPD is the only things that you have a certificate, you know, diploma, courses, and further education. And it's not. There's lots of things that come from CPD. If you're part of a committee, uh, Participation. It doesn't have to be an engineer, like, but you have an opportunity to demonstrate your communication skills, for example. You can add this as CPD hours. Today, here, this presentation, you can add the CPD hours. If you are uh, reading a book or doing like some research online to help you to develop a project in work, you can add the CPD hours. But it's important to mention there that it's a maximum of 35 hours, those 35, a maximum of 14 hours uh, can be used. This is a self curriculum. And uh, in the process of applying for a professional title, a minimum required is 35, but we always recommend you to have around 50 and have a good variety of types of CV. Okay, so I'm um, getting towards the end. Um, but here's a, um, an event we have every year. It's called uh, the Charter Engineer of the Year. This is a, a big deal here um, in our. So this is a um, design reading experience, I think clients, I don't know how to spell it, how it's pronounced really, but uh, he's a, he won the chart in the year of the year 2022. So we received around 400 applications and six get to the short group, and then they have to present the um, final project and one will be awarded as a profession was the chart in the year of the year. So to finalize now, I have a very short uh, video of John Power. He's the president of Engineer Zara. It's a good way for you guys, you know, meet to see the president of Engineer Zara and he also talk about the membership. Um, Engineers Ireland is your professional home. We're a diverse and vibrant community comprised of 25,000 members who are committed to creating sustainable solutions for society. We're with you as you commence your career as apprentices, as engineering students, through graduation and beyond. We will support and guide you and provide you with professional development opportunities. Our regional branches, divisions and societies will also provide you with ideal networking opportunities with others from our engineering community as you progress throughout your career. As you develop and advance, we'll support you to attain a registered professional title, providing you with a badge of excellence in recognition of your professional competence and experience. Our membership team is here to support you every step of the way. We invite you to join this vibrant community. Please contact our membership team today. Now, so 
So I start, I tried, I don't know if I did right. I put in curve later, but thank you. Is that correct? Okay, great. So there's my email address. If you have any questions, I will open for questions at the end. And, and but you also can send me uh, an email. So now I'm passing on to Dennis Harge. Thank you. Thank you, Niji, for uh, the presentation. <laughs> um, yeah, from now on, I'm just going to continue in Croatian. And uh, I'm just told that I have 10 minutes ish. So, so I'm going to be talking for the whole day. So, um, I'm going to go um, yeah, so I'm going to go to the same way as I'm going to play for the new world. And I'm going to go to the same way as I'm going to go to the same Znači ovako, edukacija, kako sam se preselio u Irsku, prvo sam počeo raditi malo, ali sam imao uvijek u glavi da bih mogo otići na fakus. Tako da sam upisao, kao što vidite, da je dođe u Waterfordu, posle srednje. Radio sam malo i u Waterfordu sam otišao prvi grad i Znači, upisao sam Electrical Technology u Security Systems. To je godinu dana, level 5. I tamo sam upoznao dosta ljudi i dosta prilika sam dobio tamo. I uvid u školovanje, što je najbitnije. Uvid u školovanje zato što koji korak bi vi uzeli da bi krenuli školovanje u Irsko, da li je to učenje engleskog, da li je to odmah fakultet, da li je moguće odmah učiti fakultet i tako dalje. Tako da, kao što sam pričao sa Borom, možete poslije ovog eventa da možete poslati mi e-mail, poruku i dakle kasnije o bilo čemu, pa ćemo objasniti. Poslije toga sam otišao, predstavio sam se u Limerick, počeo sam studirati od novije izvore energije u Tušić inženjering, to je level 8 što je četiri godine, ali izaću znači nakon treće godine i prebacitim se u robotu, što je također mogućnost u Irske, i onda dobijete bachelor, znači bakalar i bachelor honors iz ovoga i iz drugog sektora. Također sam počeo distant learning, što je dosta korisna stvar i moguće završiti i to, biznis, naravno, u sektoru u kojem sam trenutno, jel? Tako da, management, engineering, management, jel? Na projektima u kojima sam radio, sa srednjom školom imao sam produkciju biodizela i supervision, novija supervision, u pomoć arduinost, rada i tako dalje, što je sve tehničke i tehničke imena za nadzor produkcije proizvodnje. Kasnije radio sam na CHP, što je Domain Heat and Power, to je u Limeriku i na Solari projektu. Uz pomoć firme Apple Energy, tamo sam došao u kontakt sa Limerick City Council, gdje znači sa proglavarstvom grada možete raditi na određenim projektima. Kasnije, znači, ove godine preko ljeta bio sam u ispredvrhnjim centru za fotoniku, što je komunikacija, pomoću svjetla i tako dalje. Znači, ima prilika i za ovu priliku u Porku sam sadno par mjeseci prije što sam zapao u pomoću priliku. Tako da, uz pomoć istraživanja i komunikacija među kolegama sam uspio upasti neke projekte. Znači, work experience ovdje koju sam spomenio, Eurobase, to je firma u kojoj sam radio dok sam u sklopu, znači, Waterfordera i level 5 diplome, imam jedan dan work experience. Tamo sam radio, Tindle je bio ove godine, trenutno radim u GGO security, znači logistika i security monitoring. Caltech mi je bio prva firma u kojoj sam radio sa Selvijom u Irsku, kao CNC operator. On se mi, na primjer, to sam radio u sklopu fakulteta, kao zove se Test Developer Engineer Internship, što je internship, znači tri mjeseca traje i tamo sam odlučio programirati. 
jel, koje će onda kasnije koristiti u svom projektu. E, ovdje imate neke slike znači, projekata, kao što sam spomenuo, solarne ploče. E, ovaj projekt je bio u sklopu grada, to je financirao uh, Limerick City Council, ovo je iz Keltika, uh, on semi, znači programiranje, ovo je Tindle, znači mašine, ovo je znači, projekt gdje su nazisti poslali u Finjsku da uh, prezentiramo fakultet i neke od certifikata koje možete dobiti, uh, znači što je vrlo korisno, to što možete uh, iz svoje kuće to raditi i online, znači su većina njih, Uh, LinkedIn uh, je dobra stranica za učenje novih projekata i novih uh, stilova ili novih vještina, tako da tamo bi vam preporučio da vam dodete tamo i da, da znači, uključite se u neke projekte i samim time poboljšavate engleski i učite nove, nove vještine. Um, ali sam jedna od stranica na kojima sam radio znači, na Electric Creative Batteries i um, prije nek što sam uh, uopće počeo taj projekt, nisam ni znao da će mi to koristiti u budućnosti, gdje uh, sam dobio po, ponovno uh, posla u Rijicu, u Zagrebu, tako da u trećem mjesecu uh, ovo mi dosta pomoglo u intervju sa Rijicom, tako da u Zagreb se selo u trećem mjesecu i vraćam se onda u trećem mjesecu uh, ovdje u Limerike. Uh, dalje, znači, kao što znaš, možete promijeniti, uh, Hrvatsku otačku u Irsku, tako da to je isto jedna od licenca koje vam priznaju i pite vas na interviju, jer u pomoću toga možete dobiti više odgovornosti na poslu. Um, manual handling, mislim da svi već znaju ovdje da to svaki godine sradi, je, ali naravno vrlo je korisno da prilikom intervjua da imate to. Uh, neke stvari znači, koje sam, koje sam bio i uključen, uh, Pošto sam bio na fakultetu, priključio sam se volontiranju, tako da sam bio a, prezentator znači, svojeg kursa na fakultetu, pa na fakultetu imate i neke od dodatnih diploma koje se možete uključiti, a, možete biti host firme, na primjer, ako stražate firme i tako dalje, naravno ovisi do vještina i mlaske i tako dalje, možete biti a, njihov ambasador, firme, a, sa inženjer zajednicama, znači bi uključe a, i sa razvijamo, razvijamo tu neku ekipu mladih inženjera u Limeriku a, i svaki, kao što je rekla, neži, znači svaki grad ima svoju a, division, imaju svoje znači, a, societies. Uh, ovdje uh, na drugoj slici tu sam znači, volontirao u Limerick City Council, znači svaki grad uh, u svakom poglavarstvu imate prilike i vi možete poznati da ne prijeti samo volontirati. Ja. Pa onda imate neke uh, prezentacije u Irskoj, gdje je Irske, ovo je u Brokeri bilo um, i ovo je znači volonter i ovdje za student ambasada i tako dalje. Tako da ovaj, uključen sam u neke projekte na fakultetu, Thank you very much. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you for coming here in person and thank you for Engineers Island for organizing this. A great event. Thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for joining um, today live online. Um, I will also do my presentation in Croatian for the Croatian audience and uh, I'll try to give you some tips on how to improve your career and what are some good steps that you can do to kind of um, improve faster um, and change a lot of jobs. So I've seen like kind of the career jumping moves that can be uh, very useful. I've worked with a lot of uh, engineers throughout my career um, from the uh, recruiting side, also from uh, in IT based companies uh, and then working in cybersecurity currently. Um, I moved to Ireland four years ago and uh, I've transferred to Croatian now, so if you have any questions in English, I'll, I'll be glad to repeat them um, afterwards in the networking event. So let's get started. Dobro dok još jednom, moj ime Bodna Zuber. Pitanje je zapravo kako zapravo početi sa 
svime kako si pokrenuo ti karijeru i što bi mogle biti neke stvari koje bi mogle biti korisne da si ubrzate cijelu tu priču. Jer, jer većina ljudi koja se recimo, razmišlja preseliti se u Irsku ili u neku drugu, drugu državu koja ima više prilika ili se unaprijediti karijeru u Hrvatskoj i drugim državama, gleda zapravo kako početi. Jer, I jer se da ovaj prvi slajd bude više orijentiran na studente i mlađu publiku koja možda još nije toliko napredovala u karijeri jer bi to moglo pomoći da si ubrzaju proces. Jer. Prvo je zapravo znat, bitno se znati da zapravo nema točnog rješenja, niko vam na početku ne kaže koji je idealni kurs, imate milijon opcija koje vam možete krenuti i zapravo trebate sami shvatiti u kojem smjeru želite ići i što vas interesira, jer vidjeli ste po temeselu primjeru, kad imate nešto što vas interesira, onda uložite puno više vremena, onda to puno više energije, onda vam se to dugoročno puno više isplati. Ja? Google vam je to najbolji prijatelj, jer na početku nemate informacije, na Google su sve informacije, besplatne, ali možete doći do zapravo bilo kojeg rješenja koje vam treba. Jel? Tako da počnete od toga da istražujete u kojem smjeru bi zapravo išli. Jel? Ako se odlučite za preseljenje, ovo su neke prve stvari na koje se trebate fokusirati, adresa na nekoj dobroj lokaciji, račun od banci, PPS broj i sim kartica za broj telefona, su neke osnove koje će vam trebati da bi odlučiti započeli cijeli taj proces. Ako to već imate odrađeno, onda je zapravo tip naći bolju adresu, to je mjesto gdje ima više prilika, gdje ima više um, firmi koje su orijentirane na ono što vi želite raditi, jer vidjet ćete kako počnete istraživati da zapravo jako puno lokacija je vezano za određeni sektor, to je određeni sektor je vezan za određenu lokaciju, jel? i onda se prema tome možete orijentirati. Jel? I naravno bolje poslovne prilike i tako dalje. Jel? Networking je nešto što svi uvijek onako stave na zadnje mjesto, a ja mislim da nudi jako puno prilika, jer kad znate ljude, neko vam može već pet otvorene pozicija u ovoj firmi, traže baš ljude poput tebe i to vam može onda otvoriti put u nešto što se što uopće niste ni čuli ni znali i to može onda naprijediti karijeru i poboljšati se. Jel? Tako da ja mislim da su ljudi tu zapravo na prvom mjestu, što se svega toga tiče, iako u cijelom ovom engineering dijelu jako puno ljudi zapravo ne voli raditi sa ljudima, nego se više fokusira na IT, na strojeve, na uh, mašine i same procese i tehnologiju iza toga, jel? Uh, ali definitivno nemojte zaboraviti na ljude jer tu ćete dobiti odlične kontakte koje vam mogu pomoći zapravo da se pomaknete u smjeru u kojem hoćete ići. E sad, kad ste započeli, napravili neke prve korake koje vas vode u smjeru kojem hoćete ići, sljedeći što želite je naravno napredovati, unaprijediti karijeru, naš bolji posao, bolje uvjete. Ja? I naravno, sve ćete to morati svesti na nekakav CV, ako ga nemate, napravite ga, to vam je osnovni korak, svaka firma će vas tražiti za to, morate ga moći poslati. Na kraju dana, da bi napravili dobar CV, morate dobro znati objasniti ljudima šta zapravo znate raditi. I vidjet ćete iz perspektive rekrutment industrije, jako puno toga se svodi zapravo na keywords. Svi ljudi žele ispričati veliku priču, a zapravo ste neka to svodi na jednu do dvije riječi koja točno pokazuje šta vi znate raditi. Da bi da fokusirate se na par stvari u kojima ste jako dobri, da bi mogli to istaknuti na svom CV, jer će vam to onda učiniti razliku da vas se zamijeti od drugih ljudi. Jel? Edukacija, slaje znanje se stavi ovdje jer vidjeli ste po Denisovom primjeru, nije dovoljno samo ići na faks, čitati knjige, proučavati kurse i to, nego baš zato što ima jako puno primijenjenog, morate znati i samo znanje o tome što radite. Jel? Edukacija će vas dovesti do određene točke, probajte steći praktično iskustvo i znanje, ubacivati se u radne grupe, eventove, steći u praksu, napraviti prve korake koje možete i to kroz vrijeme pojačati sve više i više, jer na kraju dana će vas neko zaposliti zato što vi znate nešto napraviti, nešto odraditi, objasniti i to će vam da pomoći dalje. Sljedeće, LinkedIn. Um, kao što sam prije već bio rekao, recruitment industrija danas većinom funkcionira preko LinkedIna, sve ove poslovne stranice koje postoje na netu su super, ali um, Vidjet ćete u svakoj firmi, zapravo ljudi dođu i počnu pretraživati po LinkedInu. Dobar LinkedIn profil vas može čak možda i dalje dovesti nego dobro napravljen CV, jer će vas prije ljudi naći, povećite se sa više firmi i ponude mogu doći k vama, a ne morate vi ići prema firmama jel, da bi došli do toga. Tako da to mi je, to mi je jedna stvar na koju jako puno ljudi zaboravi i tu ću opet onda staviti ljude, isto kao i networking prije, zato što Ljudi su na LinkedInu, povežite se s njima, javite im se. Možete dosta se naći čovjek koji radi u IT odjelu u kojem se vi želite ubaciti, pitati ga sve od koliko vam je plaća, koji su skillsi koji su potrebni, šta je potrebno na razgovoru za posao i čovjek će vam dosta se reći kako je on dobio taj posao i to vam može skratiti proces traženja posla za neka čak i duplo i puno više, jel? i možete dobiti odlične informacije koje vam pomogu da to sve ubrzate. Dakle, to su neke stvari ovako da vas ubrzaju. 
Na kraju sam stavio, sljedeći slajde je zapravo vezan za to kako razmišljati o cijeloj toj priči, jer karijera će vam se kroz nekoliko godina zapravo dosta promijeniti, nećete biti ista osoba koja ste na početku. Po meni treba jednu stvar uvijek imati na pameti, taj beginner's mindset. Svaki dan zapravo može biti kao prvi dan da ste krenuli i uvijek možete nešto naučiti. I kao što ste u prošlom slajdu vidli, ljudi će vas zaposliti radi znanja koje imate i skillsa koje možete upotrijebiti svaki dan. Nemojte gledati zato što imate puno iskustva o nečemu, da ste sad došli do vrha i da je to to, nego probajte stalno od kolega učiti, opet nekako povezivanje sa ljudima, pričate, učite, nemojte nikad stati. Ciljete na više, samo zato ako ste dobili neki dobar posao, nemojte tu stati, kao što sam rekao, za 5 do 10 godina ćete biti druga osoba, ako ne ciljete na više, ima na jedan odličan kod, kao ako ne idete prema gore, vjerojatno ne idete prema dole, tako da probajte se usmjeriti prema tome da napredujete i da se za par godina zapravo puno više, jako puno ljudi to gleda onako fiksno, ne znam da ću bezveze primjer, ja sam konobar i ja ću ostati konobar za uvijek, jel? Ne morate biti, možete pozvati menadžer restorana, na kraju se prebaciti u neki drugi odjel, postati direktor, jel, takve stvari, ali to treba vremena, tako da ciljate na više. Vidjeli ste već po ovim primjerima i od Inženjir Zajlen, i od Denisa i vjerojatno ako ste si gledali po netu, da ima jako puno prilika. Problem je o tome što ljudi imaju taj scarcity mindset i onda ne razmišljaju zapravo o tome gdje bi sve prilika moglo biti, niti ih ne traže, nego misle to je to, odustajeno i onda se ne otvore prema novim prilikama. Gledajte prema tome da se svijet razvija, stalno se nešto radi, ima posla, samo ga treba naći. I onaj ko želi raditi će ga sigurno naći, samo trebate ići prema tome gdje ga ima. Ja mislim da nega samo treba dobro povezati sa ljudima da dođete do te informacije gdje je sad nešto aktualno, gdje se sad nešto razvija. Biti kompetitivan i zboriti se za sebe nešto što isto ljudi zaboravljaju. Samo ako imate znanje i imate dobro nešto odraditi, nekad vam neće biti dovoljno, jer će kolega koji ima isto to znanje, isto taj životopis, doći, progurat se i može dobiti posao prije vas. Tako da trebate se malo nekad i pogurat, zovite ljude pet puta, ako vam nisu vratili mail, šaljite im još jedan, nazovite, dođite, pokucajte na vrata, da je nisi jednu priliku dobio sad nedavno sam, zato što je dosta se došao pred ured, otvorio vrata, rekao dobar dan, da možemo odraditi razgovor i odradio ga i dobio posao preko toga. I to se ljudima stalno događa, a ljudi gledaju i čekaju da im se neko javi. Morate malo gurat, a nas je svijet takav. Za kraj sam vam za zadnji slajd ustavio neke stvari, isto da držite onako na pameti koje bi mogli biti korisne generalno. Učite iz prošlosti. Ljudi gledaju kao, joj, napravio sam grešku, sad me to limitira. Ne, vidite kako je izgledao proces dok ste napravili tu grešku. Vrlo vjerojatno je to bilo nešto što možete uzeti za sljedeći put kad se takva slična situacija dogodi, da se uključate nekakvu korisnu stvar koja će vam pomoći za dalje i naravno veselite se budućnosti. Kako što sam rekao prije, ako ciljate na više, onda se možete veseliti, tome možete se pripremiti i možete lakše doći prema tome. Ima jedan odličan quote od Jim Rona, on je rekao radite na sebi više nego što radite na samom poslu, što je meni onako prvi put kad sam to čuo, onako bilo totalno ludo, na poslu sam 8 sati, kak da sad više radim na tome, kak da sad više radim na sebi nego na poslu, točno je o tome fora, vi morate razvijati sebe u svoje slobodno vrijeme, jel? Neki to krenu na ove formalne načine, neki to gledaju na netu i sami za sebe uče, neki nađu kolegu koji će ih učiti, davati im instrukcije, takve stvari, sve to pomaže, da bi vi sebe zapravo u svojoj profesionalnoj karijeri pogurali na to. Tako da, ako od nekak bar jedan sad dnevno, uzmite se vremena na vikend, da počnete barem raditi na sebi, vidjet ćete kad počnete dobivati rezultate iz toga, onda ćete shvatiti zapravo da to vrijeme izvan posla, a može biti čak puno vrijednije od samog posla. I na poslu ima jako puno toga repetitivno, jel? I onda ako stalno radite istu stvar, onda opet ne napredujete, jel, nego ste na nekog stagnaciji, jel? Još jedan koncept o kojem treba razmišljati, pogotovo u engineer smjeru, da li želite biti specijalista za jednu stvar ili želite biti jack of all trades, da ste naučili jako puno toga, jako puno različitih stvari i disciplina. Na početku je to možda teško za odrediti ako tek započinjete karijeru, jer ne znate kud idete, onda ne znate šta je dobro funkcioniralo. Neki ljudi odoberu rutu specijaliste, odluče se za jednu stvar i nikada mijenjaju ništa. To ima svoje prednosti, isto koji Jack of all trades, ako naučite jako puno toga, moći ćete se zapravo u više disciplina puno lakše snaći. E sad, nakon određenog vremena i nizna godina, kad ste skupili više iskustva, automatski ćete postaviti specijalist na nekom području. Odaberite ono koje vama osobno najbolje leži ili imate najveći afinitet prema tome, jer jako puno ljudi kaže zapravo da ako volite ono što radite, onda ćete puno lakše doći do većeg uspjeha. Tako da specializirajte se za ono što volite. 
I zadnja stvar, jako puno nas nema uopće stava o tome da su greške dobra stvar, taj stav se treba promijeniti, zapravo da ćete greške raditi stalno, pogotovo na početku kad ne znate i kad pogledate dugoročno karijeru, imate 30, 40, 50, 60 godina da radite puno grešaka, i ako mijenjate poslo, ako se onapređujete, vjerojatno ćete ih napraviti jako puno. Stvorite se majci do tome da treba pušiti iz svojih grešaka i da uvijek u procesu možete naći nešto što ste napravili krivo, ali proces kako ste došli do toga vam može biti zapravo neprocijenjivo vrijedan, jer ako sljedeći put možete predvidjeti gdje je sljedeća greška, to vam onda dolazi ono, aha, sad znam bolju verziju, sad znam bolju varijantu i mogu doći do rješenja brže, jel? I to će vam se onda opet pretvoriti u bolje rezultate i napredovat ćete brže, jel? No evo, pošto nam je vrijeme limitirano, hvala vam na pažnji, ako imate pitanja koji su dobro došli, možete se povezati sa nama na svim družnim mrežama, imam jedan podcast na kojem se prijatelje pričamo o tehnologiji, tako da ako ima pitanja, stojamo na raspolaganju, thank you for your attention. very much and um, so here um i have the feedback form so if you just could you know maybe you take a picture and get the feedback form you can give us your opinion about the event or maybe suggestions for next events <laughs>